Hello and welcome to Around the Region. I'm your host, Whitney Stinson. On the program tonight, the Lloydminster Region Health Foundation has been doing some great work in our community. They're going to stop by and catch us up. But first, the Canadian Wheat Board topic has been debated in the headlines for weeks. Should it stay or should it go? I think you know what Minister Jerry Ritz is going to say. He takes the chair right now on Around the Region. Welcome to the show. In studio with me now is Agriculture Minister Jerry Ritz, also the MP for Battleford's Lloydminster area. Thank you so much for being on the show today. My Jerry. pleasure, Whitney. Always good to have you on. Uh, just coming off of the grand opening of the Lloydminster uh, Exhibition Grounds, that's right. fantastic. How did that uh, event go? It's been a long time coming. Um, mm. Mike Sidorik and I have been chatting about this since 2004, 2005. Wow. It's taken a long time to get to this stage. Uh, there's a lot of people thought it shouldn't be done, couldn't be done, would never be done, and uh, <laughs> there we were, cutting the ribbon today. It was, it was fantastic. It's Excellent. a great facility. Excellent. And just yeah. in time for Colonial Days, which is happening uh, a couple weeks from yes. now, we're definitely looking yes. forward to that. Well, as, as Mayor Mulligan said, too, it's, it's uh, a great addition to a host city like Lloydminster, yeah. who's been so successful in bringing in conventions and tourism groups and so on. So this really adds to your uh, toolbox for, for more things to offer. And you're just starting your summer here now as well. The house has just adjourned uh, uh, for the summer, um, but you are still keeping uh, fairly busy here, aren't you, Minister Ritz? Well, there's, there's never a lack of work. I just yeah. got back from a, a swing through Europe talking about low-level presence and mm -hmm. some of the uh, trade access issues that we've been fighting with Europeans. Uh, the G20 was on, of course. That brings in countries from around the world, so we're able to talk to Koreans about meat. Now we have a, a timeline moving forward on exporting meat into Korea, first time in a, almost a decade. Yeah. So it's great to sit down face-to-face -face with other ministers from around the world. Let's talk about that. Why should the average Canadian be excited about uh, Korea opening its, its, its mm -hmm. trade doors to Canada? Well, it used to be our fourth largest uh, meat purchaser. Uh, they've come on side now and are buying a lot of pork from Canada. A lot mm -hmm. of beef uh, will be in the offering as well coming up this fall. So we look forward to getting that uh, that access back. It also helps us put pressure on the Japanese market uh, to expand. Right now they're only allowing into 20, 22 month beef okay. to, to get up to that 30 months. So it, yeah. it's it's just another lever we can pull in other trade negotiations. And let's talk about the uh, the G20. You just said you d uh, did a, a tour through Europe there. You were uh, <coughs> meeting with the uh, agriculture minister's meeting and it says pushing for greater trade and innovation. What does mm -hmm. that mean? Well, there's a hungry world and everybody's concerned about food security and sustainability. How do we feed all these people that are that are going to be born on the earth here in the next little while? Mm -hmm. uh, and and we're, we're convinced from a Canadian perspective, as are a lot more countries joining in, that it comes down to biotechnology, doing more with less. Okay. We're seeing more and more farmland, uh, you know, be paved over, uh, become housing developments around the major centres and so on. So there's less land being farmed overall, but we're able to keep up. Uh, you know, when my grandfather farmed, uh, his farm fed 20 people on the same land mass, now I can feed 200, <laughs> right. simply because of biotechnology and new, new improved, uh, innovative ways of doing it. So we're, we're getting that message out. Uh, certainly there's a room to play for hormone-free this or that, uh, organics also, but uh, they don't have the capacity to feed, uh, feed the world like we need to do with biotechnology. Let's talk about uh, a new program that you uh, d just announced a couple days ago, the, the Better Be Breeding Program. Uh, the government is investing $1.7 million in farmers to ensure that Canadian ranchers are producing better beef. Mm -hmm. How are we doing that and, and who get, gets this money? Well, you've heard the old saying, the customer's always right. <laughs> and when a customer says, I want a leaner cut of beef or I want more marbled cut of beef, you have to go back to the genetics of the animal and to the feedstuff yeah. to, to, to deliver that product. So this is a way of, of tracing that back from the packer back through to the farmer and saying, We've, you've just given us exactly what we're looking for, give us some more of that. So the farmer has good records as to the beef breeds that he's de developing and the feedstuffs that he's using, whether it's all grass or some grain blended in and so on. And with using those records back from the packer, we're able then to deliver more of that same quality and consistency of beef. So how does a farmer take advantage of that program then? By getting a premium for that okay. premium product. Uh, this is the whole point of, of the packers knowing exactly what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. The customers that are asking for a leaner cut or a more marbled cut, they'll know to come back to Joe Rancher and say, you've right. got the marbled cut, we want another 100 head like that, when can you deliver? So it gives us that flow. Excellent. Let's talk about uh, farmers. It's been a pr pretty good news story for farmers in, in this region anyways. Not mm -hmm. so much in Manitoba, I guess. Lots of floods going, on, going well, on out there. Well, there's too much water in Manitoba and there's too much water in southeastern Saskatchewan. Right. Uh, we're in the process of working with the provinces at both levels on our agri-recovery program mm -hmm. uh, to pay for acres that aren't seeded to, to make sure that livestock growers have access to feed and so on. So those packages will be announced very, very shortly. 
And but farmers in this region, uh, definitely, uh, mm -hmm. you know, seeding has begun. People are starting to spray. What are you hearing from farmers here? W w what, from a government perspective? Well, it all looks good, but uh, you know, we're, we're not harvesting yet. It's not in the bin. Of course, mm -hmm. everybody's anxious to uh, uh, see it rain more often. Uh, yeah. We've we've had good moisture, but it always takes more at, at certain times. As you said, we're spraying right now, and you always want a good couple inches of rain after a couple of days mm -hmm. of spraying to bring that plant back to life again. So there's there's always those uh, anxieties that farmers face out there. Uh, markets look good. You know, we're continuing on with some, mm -hmm. some decent prices. Yeah. Inputs have not gone through the roof like some people forecast. They're, they're holding steady. I see the price of gas at the pump is down to $1.05. That's a good news story because yeah. farmers buy gas too. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, it's looking like a, it could be a good year. Uh, you know, you don't want to count your chickens literally before they're hatched. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, having said that, the crops that I've seen look good. I've seen some pea crops that went in early that just look fantastic. And of course, the pricing is, is there. Well, we're going to talk more about farmers, including the Canadian Wheat Board, just after this break.